It's 9 p.m. on the 18th of September, 2008. Inside an apartment at Block 349, Yishun Avenue 11, Singapore, 42-year-old Wang Zhijian tossed and turned while his partner Zhang Meng slept soundly next to him. The couple just had a fiery argument an hour earlier, but the room was now silent. According to court documents, Zhang Meng entered the bedroom at 8 p.m. that night and told Wang that both her daughter Jian Yu and herself were craving another meal of crabs. Wang, who was already struggling with his finances, reminded her that every meal of crab would cost him more than $100. He suggested for the family to eat something else instead as he wanted to save up the remaining cash. Zhang Meng did not like the sound of this. She began to insult his financial capability calling him a poor fellow. She even said that he was produced by dogs and donkeys. It's a simple translation of a derogatory term used in Chinese. Some of the more abusive expressions in Chinese often compare the insulted person with an animal of a lower class. Wang, who was faced with a barrage of insults, remained silent. The argument eventually died down and Zhang Meng tucked herself into bed and went to sleep as if nothing had occurred. Wang, on the other hand, was now burning with anger. His frustration intensified as he thought long and hard about the life he was promised but didn't actually have. Prior to this, he was told by Jiang Meng that their new life in Singapore would be different. It would give them a chance to start over and put away the troubles of their past. This was what he least expected. He must have felt that he was getting cheated. Zhang Meng had squandered his money carelessly, and yet he continued to spend his money on her, out of love. But was his love worth spending his life savings on expensive dinners, luxury handbags, branded clothes, and last but not least, crabs? After tossing and turning for about an hour, he got out of bed and headed to the kitchen. With both of his hands placed on the countertop, he made every effort to cool himself down. Wang was hurt. His ego was hurt. According to psychologists, men are by nature emotionally dependent. For many males, especially those above the age of 35, a man's sense of self is defined by his abilities and accomplishments. They get sensitive and sometimes defensive in touchy areas such as finance, women, and the questioning of their authority. Wang felt that he had already provided the basic necessities for them. He knew that the luxurious lifestyle she desired was unsustainable, but being mocked for it was enough to drive him to the brink of insanity. He grabbed a knife that was sitting in the kitchen and headed straight for the room. Consumed by a burning anger, he entered the room and closed the door behind him. The following statements were made by Wang. I returned to the bedroom and Zhang Meng was sleeping on the mattress laid on the floor. She rested her head on the usual flowery pillow, lying on the mattress and her face facing the ceiling. The room was in darkness as I did not switch on the light. I closed the bedroom door and went up to Zhang Meng. I could see her figure on the mattress, although the light was not switched on. The knife was in Wang's hand, but Zhang Meng was still sound asleep. In a half-squatting position, with my left knee on the mattress, I grasped the knife with my right hand and thrust it 45 degrees downwards at Zhang Meng's abdomen region. At that moment, she screamed and struggled a little, as if she wanted to sit up. I think it was her instant reaction, a normal human reaction. She did not manage to sit up. I thrust her many times with the knife continuously, and I could not remember the exact number of times. When I gave her the first stab, she screamed once. Followed by a few screams. I kept on stabbing her abdomen region. It happened very fast and vaguely I remember. She continued to struggle 
and move her body. I thrust her abdomen region with the knife until she became motionless. My knife went in and out of her body. Listening to Heinous, an Asian true crime podcast, brought to you by MediaCorp and produced by One Up Media. This episode might contain scenes of violence and criminal activity. Listener discretion is advised. Several hours ago, as 17-year-old Jian Yu went to bed that night, all she could hear was the muffled bickering between her mother and Wang. She had always despised Wang and held him responsible for all the misfortune he had brought to her once complete family. She sighed as she closed her eyes that night, trying to fall asleep. (sighs) Hours later, she would be awakened by a loud noise coming from her mother's room. Jenny panicked and dashed towards the bedroom door. This would turn out to be a fatal decision. When she opened the doors, she caught a fleeting glimpse of her mother's body, which had been riddled with stab wounds, lying on a blood-soaked bed. Frozen in fear, she screamed out of pure instinct. This was a statement made by Wang, as he described the sequence of events. When I was thrusting Zhang Meng's abdomen region with a knife, suddenly the bedroom door opened. I did not lock the bedroom door. Actually, during my stay there, I have never locked the bedroom door. Zhang Meng was the only one who entered my bedroom. I saw a person standing at the bedroom doorway and uttered something which I did not hear clearly. The whole house was in darkness and the only source of lighting came from outside the flat giving faint lighting to the surroundings around me. I was near the doorway and I stepped forward towards that person. I lost my mind and I could not control my emotions. I went forward to stab that person's abdomen region. I gave that person a few thrusts at the abdomen region with the same knife. That person did not struggle. She staggered forward and I gave her subsequent stabs. She collapsed on the same mattress beside Zhang Meng. According to autopsy reports, both mother and daughter suffered a total of 98 stab and slash wounds. Among the 98, 16 of them were potentially fatal. In an interview with the police, Wang also says that when he first saw Jian Yu, he was unable to recognize her as his only instinct was to kill the person standing in the doorway. In fact, he would consistently refer to Jian Yu as that person in most of his statements. He had only realized that it was Jian Yu after he managed to collect himself and take a look at her body, which at this point was motionless and slumped over her mother's. The bed was now drenched in blood and the floors had also been stained red. But with two dead bodies in the room, Wang still wasn't finished. The flat in Yishun was also occupied by two other tenants, another mother and daughter duo. Born in April 1972, Yang Jie grew up in Shenyang, China, and was married twice in her life. Her first was to a taxi driver whom she had a daughter with in 1993. She named her Mei Lin, and when she had just turned eight months old, she divorced her first husband and took custody of the child. Similar to Zhang Meng, she made the decision to move to Singapore with her daughter in order to provide her with a better education. Yang Jie and Zhang Meng were both referred to as a study mummy. It's an informal term that refers to mothers who travel to Singapore to live with their children while they study there. The term was popularized after the Singaporean government loosened its immigration laws, which led to more foreigners studying and working in the country. Yang Jie knew that a good education was the key to providing her daughter with a great future, 
Hence, she made personal sacrifices in order to make that happen. Records state that she resigned from her job as a real estate agent and even sold her house in order to cover the living expenses and tuition fees in Singapore. Having shared the same rental flat, Yang Jie was also able to keep accommodation costs down. And it was also a bonus that her daughter Mei Lin went to the same school as Jian Yu at the time. Both mother and daughter pair could have shared a great relationship as they both were from the same country and were currently in similar circumstances. But that night, Yang Jie and her daughter weren't spared from Wang's wrath. Some of the details may be extremely disturbing, but this is 15-year-old Li Meilin's harrowing account of what happened that night. Both her mother and her had been asleep, but woke up startled by the sound of heavy breathing outside her bedroom. She then heard Jen Yu's familiar voice screaming for their attention in Mandarin. As the screaming subsided, the door swung open and Wang barged in. Ah! Mei Lin screamed as he slashed her multiple times with a knife, while her mother Yang Jie hurried past Wang and out the bedroom door. The slashing continued even as she placed her hands up and knelt down with her back against the wall. Wang then left the room to hunt for her mother, but he warned her not to move an inch. This is a description of the events, according to Wang himself. I lost my mind, and I could not control my emotion. My mind was blank. I kept stabbing that person many times at her abdomen region. While stabbing that person in front of me, the other person ran out of the bedroom. I dragged the one whom I stabbed to the double-decker bed and continued stabbing her at the lower deck with the same knife. I then left the bedroom to look for the one who escaped. When Wang left, Mei Lin tried to escape by scurrying to the bathroom. But before she even made it there, she was grabbed from the back and pushed onto the side of the bed. As she struggled to break free, Wang continued to stab and slash her. With every ounce of strength left, Mei Lin gave Wang a kick to the thigh, causing him to fall and giving her a brief window of opportunity to escape. Bleeding heavily and in excruciating pain, she ran out of the room and towards the kitchen toilet. She tried to shut the foldable plastic door behind her, but before she could, Wang hacked it, <laughs> causing the door to fall apart. A forceful struggle ensued as Mei Lin tried to fight for her life while Wang fought back to end hers. <laughs> Wang says, I just gave a kick at the plastic foldable door and it gave way. I saw a person standing there and I did not see her face. I stood at the doorway inside the toilet and I stabbed her with the same knife. She struggled with me and managed to take away my knife. It happened very fast and I do not know how to describe the process. I saw her holding my knife with her left hand, leaning against the wall. I became frightened when she was in possession of my knife. I took another knife in front of the cutlery shelf in front of that toilet. I continued to stab her with my second knife. I think my finger was injured during this time when she took away my knife. In the midst of the attack, I dropped my second knife. I took a third knife from the cutlery shelf and returned to continue stabbing her with the third knife. I stopped attacking her when she lay on the floor and stopped moving. The only thing Mei Lin remembers before her eyes shut was praying to God for death to come soon. Mei Lin's mother Yang Jie had escaped Wang by running out of the bedroom during the initial attack. Wang knew this and was looking for her. According to him, 
It was around this time when he noticed several units from the opposite blocks start to light up. He said he saw residents standing by their windows and looking down at the direction of the ground floor. Wang himself looked down and saw a body lying on the floor. He then backed away from the kitchen window and closed it after realizing that the body belonged to Yang Jie. It seems that in an attempt made by Yang Jie to escape from the horror, she had no other choice but to leap out of the window and fall to her death. It also seems that Wang didn't know about this as he was preoccupied with slashing Mei Lin. However, according to court documents, this was not entirely true. It's possible that Wang could have left out crucial information or added false details, or both. But the fact is, Yang Jie's death did not resemble what Wang had previously mentioned. Instead, during the escape, Yang Jie ran towards the kitchen and made a last resort decision to climb out of the kitchen window. Wang and Yang Jie locked eyes as he approached her. She knew that if she didn't jump, Wang would kill her. But if she did, a fall from that height would too. Yang Jie stood on the narrow concrete overhang, clinging onto the laundry pole holders for dear life. Upon reaching the kitchen window, Wang used the knife to cut her fingers, which made her lose her grip and fall six stories down to her death. At around 12.50am, police received a call that a woman was found lying motionless on the ground floor at a residence in Yishun. Immediately, a team from the Ang Mo Kyo Police Division was dispatched to the scene to investigate. Upon their arrival, several residents were seen near the body. They told officers that they heard a man shouting, furniture being thrown, and the sound of chopping. Other neighbours also reported that they tried to peek inside one of the units where the noise was coming from, but couldn't see anything because the lights were switched off. Immediately, reinforcements were called in because the officers had a feeling that this was going to be an ugly one. They eventually found bloodstains on a door of a flat on the sixth floor. When the officers knocked on the door, Wang refused to let them in. Firefighters were then called to break the door down, and upon entry, blood was seen everywhere. Wang Zhijian was detained and the bodies of Zhang Meng and her daughter Jian Yu were found inside one of the bedrooms. Another girl was discovered lying in the kitchen toilet. Miraculously, she was alive, and paramedics immediately rushed her to the hospital for treatment. The girl was 15-year-old Li Mei Lin, the only survivor of Wang's horrific onslaught that evening. Wang Zhijian's vicious attack left three dead and a lone survivor. The ordeal left Li Meilin with 41 knife injuries on her face, jaw and right ear. One of her ears was nearly torn off and she also lost her right eye to the attack. The doctors operating on her had no choice but to remove the damaged eyeball and replace it with a prosthetic one. The trial of Wang Zhijian began on November 22, 2011 and it had its fair share of twists and turns. Wang claims that his mind had gone blank from rage, so much so that it made him unable to recall the events of the attack. He said that he didn't know how a knife landed in his hands and why he attacked them in the first place. Only when he took a shower was when he started to get a sense that something bad had just happened. However, the prosecution called this bluff they emphasized the fact that not only did he remember to take a shower to wash the blood off, he also got dressed, applied bandages to his wounds, packed his suitcase, took his travel documents, and even put on his socks and shoes. Wang was clearly thinking straight, as he realized that he had to get the hell out of there. The long and winding trial saw a number of appeals, including one from Wang's attorneys, who tried to put up a defense of diminished responsibility. Usually, diminished responsibility implies that the accused wasn't fully himself when he committed the murder. Take for example, a mental illness, or for the case of Wang, the mental agony he felt when he stayed with Zhang Meng. 
If successful in proving his defense, he would only be convicted of culpable homicide, not amounting to murder. The punishment would be anywhere from life imprisonment to a fixed term of 10 years, instead of the death penalty for murder. On November 30th, 2012, the final day of the Yishun Triple Murder Trial, presiding judge Justice Chan Sing On delivered his judgment. For the deaths of Zhang Meng and Fen Jian Yu, Wang was found to be indeed suffering from diminished responsibility. The judge attributed this decision to the anger that Wang felt from the humiliating mistreatment by Zhang Meng, which finally led to him losing his control and stabbing her. For Jian Yu, it was ruled that Wang indeed did not recognize her during his state of frenzy. Bringing up Wang's earlier statements in which he described Jian Yu as the person standing at the doorway, the judge considered the deaths of both Zhang Meng and Jian Yu as a single transaction. Wang was found guilty of culpable homicide not amounting to murder for the deaths of Zhang Meng and Feng Jian Yu. However, in the case of his third victim, Yang Jie, Wang was found not to be suffering from diminished responsibility. Due to the extended length of time between the murders, Wang would have had plenty of time to fully regain his composure and his mental faculties. Additionally, all his stress and bottled up anger should have already been released by then. Therefore, the judge found Wang guilty of second degree murder and handed him the death sentence. The Yishun triple murders were indeed one of the most shocking crimes that has ever happened in Singapore in the past 20 years. The effects of the crime were felt throughout the nation, particularly among other study mummies in Singapore. It had sent major ripples among the Chinese community and quickly became one of the most frequently discussed topics on online Chinese forums. Some of the study mummies living in Singapore at the time even spoke out about the incident. One of them said, that she's extremely saddened whenever there are any negative reports about Chinese study mummies in Singapore. She expressed that she, as well as every other study mummy, want nothing but for their children to have a good education in Singapore. Despite the tragic events that took place in her life, several articles state that Li Mei Lin continued to press on in life and even graduated with a diploma from a local polytechnic. It's been 11 years since the verdict and still, there is no doubt that the heinous murders continue to leave a significant impact on her life. Mei Lin has since turned to Christianity in an effort to find solace over this event. The heinous team continues to wish her all the strength and resilience to carry on. A Chinese national who killed three women in a flat in Yishun four years ago has been sentenced to death. Wang Zhijian was tried for the murder of his lover, Madam Zhang Meng, her teenage daughter, Feng Jianyu, and their flatmate, Yang Jie. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Heinous, an Asian true crime podcast brought to you by Mediacorp and produced by OneUp Media. If you would like to share some feedback or suggest other cases that you would like us to cover, head on down to our website at asiantruecrimepodcast.com. This episode was researched, produced, and written by Yo Guang Jin with audio engineering by Ethan Sam. Special thanks to executive producers Danny Cordy and Barry To from Media Corp. We hope to see you again soon in the next episode of Heinous. Hey